In this episode, I'm going to talk about some Cobra figures from a generation of G.I. Joe not a lot of people talk about. So, stick around. Hello everybody and welcome to my side of the laundry room. My name is Rob and in this episode I want to talk about a generation of G.I. Joe figures that not a lot of people talk about. And we're going to focus on the Cobra figures that came out in these toy lines because it is Cobra Convergence Month. This is the fifth year for Cobra Convergence and the third year in which I've been asked to participate. It is still a tremendous honor to be invited into this awesome community of G.I. Joe fans, toy collectors, and just all around awesome people. So please take the time to hit hashtag Cobra Convergence V to check out all the other videos, blog entries, podcasts, just an assorted media frenzy of Cobra that's out there on the interweb. So back to the matter at hand. What do I mean about a generation of G.I. Joe figures that not a lot of people talk about? Well, I'm talking about the generation that ran from 2002 to 2005. And it went by many names. We have G.I. Joe vs. Cobra. We have Venom vs. Valor. We have Spy Troops. But they all were a new rebranding, relaunching of G.I. Joe. Some were definite hits, and some were definite misses, but at least G.I. Joe was back out on the market. It all started for me back in 2006. I had just turned 30, I had just gotten this awesome tattoo, and I was just hungry to start collecting the toy that I loved as a kid again. Of course, up until then, I was still collecting toys here and there, collecting comics, playing role-playing games. I was still in the thick of dorkness, but... G.I. Joe kind of slipped through my fingers, and I was ready to jump back in and start collecting again. Now, of course, I hit up all the flea markets that I could find, eBay, whatever, to find those classic toys I grew up with. But, in 2006, you could readily find any of the, as I said before, G.I. Joe vs. Cobra, Venom and Valor, and the Spy Troops figures. Now, these weren't the Joes I grew up with, and a lot of them were a huge departure from what I knew and loved. But, they had a lot of great new offerings. So, the focus of this video will be to talk about some of the new characters and figures that were created for these toy lines. Some of them have had a bright future, and some of them we have not heard from since. Now, one of the biggest differences right off the bat between these figures and the classic O-ring figures are their sculpting. These were a much bigger figure, bulkier, and they had a T-crotch, as they call it, where it's just limited articulation on the legs. I mean, the knees had articulation, the arms were on ball joints and had great elbows, but this was Hasbro kind of harkening back to their Power of the Force line with Star Wars. These were just big, bulky hunks of plastic. But some of them had great, great designs and great imagination behind them. But to be completely honest, Hasbro at this time seemed to be somewhat scrambling with the G.I. Joe line. They were definitely repainting classic old O-ring figures and slapping on a new paint job, saying they were version five, six, seven of classic figures, and some of them they're repainting and saying they're all new original figures. So it was a real weird crapshoot of what you would stumble upon when it came to this generation of G.I. Joe. And before I go on, this generation also started the comic book three packs that were super awesome, but they we're not going to talk about those because most of those figures were redesigns of the classic characters. And this we're going to focus on brand new, all new original characters. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry to 
just pile on all this backstory on you. Most of these figures came in two packs, so I'll just make a mention of what Joe figure they came with, but we're focusing on Cobra because it's Cobra Convergence 5, folks. Anyway, number one on the list is the Cobra Moray. And let me stop you right there. Yes, there is a vehicle called the Moray, the cool hydroplane, but no. These are a new elite group of eels that were bioengineered to be stronger, better swimmers, and handle the pressures of underwater combat and exploration. This is just a really neat design. And with a lot of these Cobra soldiers, troop builders, if you will, they just slapped a hundred different paint jobs on them to pump out as many as they could. There were great colors, like this classic black one I love, but they also did a red one that was equally as awesome. There's just something about this figure. It's very simple. It, you know, has the comes with the swimming fins, comes with a knife, comes with a gun, but I love the tubes. And unfortunately, they're built into the figure. So it's not like he has an awesome backpack with removable hoses like they did back in the day. But this is a nice, clean, simple figure, and I just really like the look of it. Now, if you notice the character's face, a lot of the Cobra troops shared this same motif, if you will. It's a big departure from the old cloth face mask of the classic Cobra troops, but it kind of works in some of the cases. Some of them, it did not. The Cobra Moray was packaged with wetsuit and was released in 2002. Next up is the Neo Viper, and this is the new generation of infantry for Cobra. This figure was also released in 2002 and came packaged with Frostbite. Now, there's just something very clean and simple about this figure I like as well, like the Moray. The Neo Viper's helmet design is very reminiscent of the Crimson Guards and it just kind of congealed into one awesome infantry soldier. Another cool thing about the Neo Vipers were their repaints. They came in some of the classic colors that were part of the original G.I. Joe line. There was a gray one that harkened back to the Stinger Driver. There was a red one that looked exactly like a Crimson Guardsman. Just neat, simple, a great troop builder. And Yes, I know the emblem on his chest isn't red, but how it stands out with the yellow, fluorescent green, whatever color you want to say it is, is nice. It's a very nice, clean paint job, and it stands out, and it spells doom for G.I. Joe. Next on the list is a figure that I see as being a far departure from the typical G.I. Joe figure. Unfortunately, the more I think about that statement I just made, I'm not taking into account the freaky but awesome aliens that came out in the late 90s. But this dude would kind of fit in. These are the heavy water troops. And with their cool little antennas on their helmet, they kind of look like they could come from an alien world. The heavy water troops were the next step in the Toxo Viper chain of command. These were the dudes that went in and messed with toxic waste, went in to work on the reactor cores of things. These were the guys that, as the file card kind of states, glow in the dark. Heavy Water was released in 2003 and came packaged with Heavy Duty. Number four on the list is a character that should have come many, many years before, and that is Cobra's medic, Scalpel. Released in 2003, Scalpel came packaged with Sergeant Hacker, which we won't get into because just we won't. G.I. Joe for years has had medics like Doc and Lifeline, but it took them so long to finally give you a Cobra medic. Of course, with it being Cobra, they take the idea of triage and life-saving in a kind of darker direction. I mean, the guy had pop-out bone saws on his wrists. I mean, that's a, that's a little creepy and crazy, but cool nonetheless. And before I forget, while we're talking about creepy, 
one of his main weapons were carrying hooks. So, if there's an injured Cobra troop on the ground, he could take said carrying hook and thunk and take them off the battlefield to save their life? Give their body parts to Dr. Mindbender? Whatever. It's still awesome. Number five on the list is one of my absolute favorite Cobra troops from this generation, and that is the Electric Eel. Now, the Electric Eel are moray troops that they augmented even more to carry an electric charge like an electric eel. So they were even more dangerous in underwater combat. Now, it has translucent green pieces to the figure. These are really neat. I mean, they even had translucent green gloves that came with them. And they're just a really beautifully designed figure. The Electric Eel was released in 2004 and came packaged with Tunnel Rat. And to be honest, none of the variants after this came close to the original first version. Number six on the list is... Okay, he's not a very exciting figure, but I really dig the design, and that is the Pit Viper. This was released in 2003 and came packaged with Duke. He looks more akin to a Hydra agent from Marvel Comics than he does an actual Cobra troop, and I kind of dig it. He has a very comic book heavy aesthetic that I like. The mask, the eyes, the uniform in general. On his chest, instead of just having a normal Cobra emblem, he has one that has part of the actual body of the Cobra coming up onto his chest, and I dig that too. I think it's got great colors, a great design, and it's just a really simple troop builder that you can fit into any generation of G.I. Joe. So, I dig it. The next Cobra Trooper on the list is Swamp Rat. Now, this figure isn't much to look at until you start adding on all the accessories. And that is his helmet and his cool poncho thing, which has a tail. What's really screwed up about Swamp Rat is that they are either volunteer troopers or kidnapped civilians that were injected with the venomous serum, which we'll kind of get to later, that actually genetically changed their body into that of a Swamp Rat. They're able to maneuver deftly in the swamps and go undetected like a rat. Yes, that's kind of cheesy, but I love how this dude looks. Like I said, with his helmet and his poncho on, yeah, without those things, it's kind of a turd. But add those, and you got a great figure. Oddly enough, he came packaged with Alpine, which is a mountain climbing Joe that wouldn't really be in the swamps. But who am I to judge? Number eight on the list is kind of cheating, and I apologize. It's the Meta Viper, which are the underlings of Scalpel. Now, they share a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of the same characteristics as the Scalpel figure, but these are troop builders. And that's actually something G.I. Joe didn't have when it came to its medics. You had named people saving others, but these are just nameless peons that are out on the battlefield hooking injured people, again, hooking with their bone saw attachments on their hands. Saving people, yes, saving people. But, again, I just, I really dig this, and I think that it was something that should have been released years ago. I mean, it was years ago now, but back then, years ago. You know what I mean. Now, number nine on the list is a character I never hear about, and that's partly because... It's stupid, but it had a pretty neat action figure when you think about it. Now, the Venomous Maximus was this generation's stab at a Serpentor-like creature, person, character, thing. And he was genetically created by Dr. Mindbender by taking DNA from different things here and there and cobbling them together into this Harmonicles. Now, what I like about this figure is it has a monstrous arm 
and it just has different proportions. It's a bit stockier, has a bigger head to it, and just looks monstrous. The file card states that he's the ultimate creation of Dr. Mindbender. I really don't buy that. I think that's Serpentor. But this dude's pretty cool. Like when I mentioned Swamp Rat, that dude is part of what they call the V Troopers line, which is the venomous troopers. And they're created, you know, with different genetics and things like that. Now, Venomous Maximus, he is created by taking all those V Troopers DNA and things and then smashing them together to create this one monster. Yeah, it's a big reach, it's a little crazy, but like I said, I really like the action figure. And extra bonus points, his second version came with green translucent arms. He was released in 2004 and he came packaged with Duke, another version of Duke. Now number 10 on the list, if you thought I was cheating with the Meta Viper, you're going to really think this is cheating. This is a 2001 release of three figures that was originally slated to come out in 1994. Now they weren't produced because the toy line ended by that time, but these are the Manimals, which is an awesome 80s TV show. Anyway, the Manimals kind of fell into the whole Star Brigade thing. I think it's kind of cheating also, even though it's a release of something that should have came out in the 90s, that they're not really Cobra figures, but they're bad guys. The three alien villains were named Slyther, Warwolf, and Iguanus. Now, their big action feature was that they look semi-normal, even though slightly alien-like, that you could transform them to a degree. You would kind of bend them back that a beastly head would rise from their chest. Like I said, they're not traditional Cobra Troopers or Cobra Agents at all, but they're villains. That's why I'm putting them on this list. And yes, I'm a sucker for those aliens from the Star Brigade line. I don't know what it is. I just think that they're neat designs and they're just a neat add-on to the G.I. Joe universe where you can see where the building blocks of the O-Ring G.I. Joe start and the cool alien aesthetic is added on. Now these don't have anything to do with the O-Ring versions. These were a complete redesign of the whole G.I. Joe mold, which is also very fitting for the whole 2000 to 2005 toy line. Anyway, they're cheesy, they're funky, but I like them. I'm a fan of them. Anyway, thank you for watching this special Cobra Convergence episode of My Side of the Laundry Room. My name is Rob. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you liked this or any of the episodes YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.